Today's video, I'm going to be breaking down a little bunch offset kind of mini scheme out of the Indianapolis Colts offensive playbook. Uh, for my team setup here, just want to kind of break down and give a little bit of an update as what I'm doing as far as end game goes. These are uh, this is my team and my abilities. So what we're going to be doing here is we are going to be rocking with Andrew Luck at our quarterback position. And the abilities we're going to have on him is we're going to have the dots X factor. This is going to make it so that he basically gets built in fearless once you get this X factor lit up. He has the set feet lead built in. Gift draft. I still think gift draft is important. Just helps make sure that you're going to catch your passes. Roaming dead eye is the key ability that Andrew Luck gets that I think is super, super effective um, in addition to all the other ones. And the reason this is good is because you can kind of build some rollout plays into your off offense. And it's gonna. we'll show you how to do that in the in the ebook. Master Tactician, this is, in my opinion, the best ability in the game next to set feet lead because it gives you not only faster, uh, it gives you conductor, but it also gives you hot route master and it gives you playmaker on every receiver. So it's a really, really good ability for a heavy passer. And then we have Gunslinger at the next ability slot. That's pretty much all you need. Um, that plus as many zero AP secure protectors, your entire offensive line at this point in the year should have zero AP secure protectors, which mine does. We're going to have uh, Donald Parham at tight end with short and elite and matchup nightmare. Michael Irvin on the outside. I'm still rocking a 70 out of 70 Super Bowl theme team. I just think it's it's easy. Um, you don't have to do that, and there are better receivers. I actually think low-key short receivers might be better than taller receivers in Madden 24. But in general, just want to get as many zero AP ev evasives on your field or zero AP jukeboxes. So everybody has pretty much jukebox or evasive in the roster. And then let me actually go to Vada Scantling. I think I, I think I need to put hit on this on him. Uh, the cool part about the Super Bowl theme team, in my opinion, is just it's like I said, it's super um, cheap, so it's very affordable at this point in the year. And also with all of the discounted AP that we have offensively, we're able to get everybody with a pass catching ability and get the zero AP evasive, and everybody has 99 speed. So those are my that's my roster setup, and I will get into the audibles for the offense. For the Colts offensive ebook, specifically for the gun bunch and the bunch offset, a little mini scheme here, we're going to go to our bunch offset formation, and our audibles are going to be smash return at the top slot. Actually, I'm sorry, we're going to put curl flat at the top slot. The second slot, I like to put smash return, as it is a really good versatile play. And then verts half back under. And then where PA read is, I actually don't really utilize PA read anymore. Uh, the play that I like to put in the uh, slot of PA read is going to be the play Z spot and go. In our bunch strong nasty, what we're going to do is we're going to have mesh flat spot. We're going to have RPO read bubble, wide trail, and then we're going to have the play dagger. And in our trips tied in offset formation, we are going to have the play RPO alert wide receiver screen, RPO alert bubble, verticals, and PA crossers. And then those are pretty much the main audibles that I'm going to be setting for the Colts playbook. So we're going to be coming out in double post pretty much every single time. And the first setup is very simple. All we're going to do is we are just going to streak our slot receiver. Now the cool part about this play is it's gonna be able to attack a variety of different coverages and we have an ability to bomb cover three and cover four coverages. So what you're gonna see here is that if the user stays underneath in a cover four or cover three coverage, this post is going to consistently be able to get over the top of the defense. Let me show you that again as we did have some crazy pass rush. So we'll show it to you one more time here and we'll talk a little bit about this. So this is gonna go for cover four or cover three. Cover four is gonna do the best, but once he crosses the face of that inside quarter, as you can see, this is a huge play against that. And if you have any kind of ability to break a tackle, which we have evasive on everybody, it's, it's a really, really good setup. So let's say that they decide, okay, we're going to go to a cover three coverage. So if they go to a cover three coverage, pretty much the same exact thing is going to happen. As you see, once he crosses that middle third, he is going to be able to get over the top because the C route is going to hold down that outside third zone. So the only real way to combat that double post post route for a big play would be one of two options. The first option is to call just a basic cover two, which is probably the best way to defend this play in particular. But what's going to be able to happen is you are still going to be able to throw this post and you're going to want to possession catch it before it gets to the deep half zone. So just before it gets to the deep half zone. But the other thing that a lot of people have started to do is they've started to go to basically a cover three and put this outside corner into a deep half. Now, while this is going to be able to stop the post route, it is not going to be able to stop the C route on that left side. So you want to be able to just look over there and see if that is an option for you. 
Now, this is also a really good setup in terms of its ability and capability to be able to beat man-to-man -man coverage. The reason why is because the running back little in route is going to oftentimes be able to attack man coverage really well. And then the post route is going to be a consistent man beating route. So it really puts the user in a lot of conflict underneath. And they basically have to choose, are they going to guard the post or are they going to guard the running back? So you see right here. And this time, for whatever reason, I think it's because we have Darrell Revis on him. Darrell Revis actually played really, really well. Now, so another thing that we want to talk about is this C route in man coverage. So what you'll see here is a lot of times when it cuts to the sideline, it's going to be able to beat man coverage consistently as well. So you have that. Now, the second setup of double post, a little bit better for man-man specifically. This is an old school setup, but really still really, really, really good. And this is just simply dragging the slot receiver. So as you can see, with this simple drag of the slot receiver, we're able to create kind of a mesh over the middle. We also have this tight end wheel that if they don't have good, if they don't have good man coverage statistics, that tight end wheel is something that can get over the top of the coverage. So as you'll see here, this time the running back able to get open against man, man to man. It kind of just varies. Man to man this year is really just not a great defense. It's really at this point in the year, though, I will say it's the best that man's been all year long. But that being said, there's just so many ways to beat it, right? Your post, your drag, your tight end route, all of those routes are going to oftentimes get open against man. Now, one of the best ways to use this play to attack man-to-man -man coverage is to drag is our is our next setup to drag the solo wide receiver, streak the slot receiver, and we're going to block our running back. Now, this is still going to do a really good job of being able to bomb both cover three and cover four coverages. As you can see, that quarter is going to sit down because of that drag route. Because we don't have a vertical route going against the defense, this is going to consistently be able to attack cover three and cover four coverages over the top, meaning that the user is going to have to use her the post route. If the user does not use her the post route, it is a one play score or a big play against cover three or cover four coverage. So what's off, what's frequently going to happen is they will go use her the post. So let's kind of showcase what that would look like. So this is the user oftentimes in dollar, they're gonna take the post route, okay? Now, while they are going to be able to stop the big play potential, when you utilize this setup right here, this drag is able to run across the formation and really find kind of a sweet spot underneath in those yellow zones underneath this coverage. Let me show that to you again as we've got kind of an odd little pass lead, and this time we'll show it to you against cover three. So a lot of people like to double flat out of cover three right now and just kind of showcasing the user going to the post here. So they vacate that middle of the field, and you can throw this underneath and be able to you know, kind of get a nice little wrap catch for a lot of yards. So double post is a very, is a, is a very kind of like big play for this offense. Now, this double post setup can also be ran both wide and short side. And I did want to talk specifically about a cover two beating aspect of this play. So a kind of an underrated cover two beating aspect of this play is if they do run this basic cover three and they kind of take the post route, which is very often what they will do, what you're able to do with this is actually create kind of a high low on a left side. So what I like to do with this is simply drag this outside receiver and block my running back. The reason I like to do this setup here is we're still getting that concept where if the user runs out of the middle of the field, you have that underneath little drag route. But the other thing that we're able to do now is if we wait on this crosser, you're going to be able to throw this crosser against a cover two with a cloud flat coverage. And that specifically that cloud flat is probably going to be pressed. This is kind of the way most people like to run their, run their defense. So in this situation like this, you're going to see that this cloud is going to kind of sit and then this crosser is able to be thrown over here. As you can see, because, and the reason that crosser is able to be thrown on that sideline is because the deep half defender is kind of responsible for defending the double post post route. So this simple drag, and then what you'll see here is once he kind of crosses the face of the formation, you just want to wait on this, throw this on the sideline, possession, catch it, and it's going to be pretty good. Now, if you are getting consistent KOs, I did want to show uh, what you can do to kind of counter that. So if they are, if they do have like a bunch of KOs, which at this point in the year, a lot of people do, then you can easily, you can just leave this right, like, like just like this, if you want to, you can literally call this play stock. 
but I really like the extra protection and I'm going to free form down into the left. Of course, we're going to get a bad free form, throw the ball into the third row. <laughs> but essentially, we'll show it to you one more time because the game is not cooperating with us. So what you're going to get here against this cover two coverage is you're just going to throw down into the outside and possession catch on the sideline. So super good play for, for cover two. If they are going to more of a deep half base coverage, this is something that I really like to go to. Now, the next portion of the double post breakdown is going to be short side bunch. So if you have your bunch to the short side, you can still run the first setup. and It's actually still really effective. Now, what makes the first setup so effective is a lot of people are either going to be calling cover two or cover three to the bunch side of the formation. If they call cover three to the bunch side of the formation and maybe they put that deep half over there, while this is really good for defending the post route, you're going to see that late in the play, this tight end wheel is going to wheel up field and is going to be able to be thrown consistently against that outside third defender because of the clear out that the streak provided for the tight end. So the best way to kind of counter that is to utilize a cover four that is baseline and press. However, I will say that oftentimes this tight end route is still able to be thrown as long as you run this to the short side. So as you see right there, able to throw that to the short side able to get a really nice completion. So what a lot of people start to do is they'll start to put those curl flats underneath in their zones. So as you see here, we're actually gonna to go to a cover three with a curl flat defenders. And I just want you to watch these curl flat zones. What oftentimes occurs is the curl flat will actually match that tight end and it'll leave this running back open super late underneath of the play. This also kind of goes back to that other setup that we talked about and this setup is still really good and still really effective on the short hash. The one thing I want to highlight is that sometimes these curl flats will match or at least drift back to that tight end wheel and it leaves that drag open underneath. Another really good setup of double post, especially if you're on this hash mark right here, is we're going to now take advantage of this short C route. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to wheel our running back. We're going to block and release drag our tight end, and we're going to streak our slot receiver. This is going to do a really good job because now the curl flat zone really can't defend that C route because the curl flat zone almost always match the running back. And so they're kind of put in a position where they're going to start to struggle to defend the C route when we run it this way. And you'll see here that that wheel route will always clear out cover four, cover three coverages. And again, we force the opponent into a cover two cloud flat based coverage, which while it can defend double post somewhat okay, as you see here, we're still able to hit it. While it can have its, have its moments at defending double post, there are so many other route combos that are open. For example, in this ebook, we're showcasing, we're showcasing Hot Route Master or Master Technician. One of the best Hot Route Master setups and really what takes Colts, Colts Bunch uh, to the next level is this setup out of Smash Return. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, leave the tight end on this corner route. We're going to leave the outside receiver on this return route. And then what we're going to do on the left side here is we're going to outside apprentice post this outside receiver. We're going to wheel route the running back, and then we're going to drag the slot. So you see this is what the setup is going to look like. What you're going to see is the deep halves will both get pulled, both simultaneously pulled outside, and it leaves this post up over the top for a big play. Now, I will say that that setup is a little bit better if your bunch is to the wide side of the field, which is fine. Um, because it kind of fits back into everything else that we're talking about. And if you do have master technician, another thing you can do is you can put the slot on a post route. What will oftentimes happen is if they're consistently running that cover two base coverage, oftentimes this post is going to uh, still clear over the top of that cover two coverage. However, as you see, I do have deep zone knockouts. So, the best way to get this open with deep zone KOs is to utilize a wheel route to the running back. And the reason why is because this wheel route will pull this deep half a little bit better. And then on the right side here, there's a couple different variations of setups. Like you could actually run a double corner if you wanted to, but I personally prefer to run something like this. And as long as you have some time in the pocket, you'll see that 
this post is going to be a big play. If they're ever running any kind of cover two coverage, you have a big, big hitting potential play, as you can see. Now, the other thing that you can do with this, and if we go back over here to the y, or short side bunch, I'm sorry, uh, with short side bunch, is short side bunch is going to give you a little bit of potential to be able to manipulate cover two coverage in a different way. One of my favorite setups for short side bunch uh, is this crosser, uh, this crosser post setup, basically stock double post. And essentially what will happen is this post route, once it cuts inside, it can actually really manipulate that cover two coverage. Now, a way that you can kind of get this a little bit more open is, again, back to that original setup with the streak. The reason why this is going to work a little better is because now your post is coming from, it just has more room to be able to work. Now, an easy way to make this a little bit more open that I did want to mention is a motion out. Most people don't run double posts this way. This is a little bit of a nuance, but it is something that I would suggest, you know, situationally, if you're getting a lot of cover two, this is something that can really, really mess cover two up. So you'll see here, see how that deep half to the left side, he really doesn't have a chance to play him. And then now, as you see, your post route becomes much more open. Another setup that I like out of double post that I do think is worth talking about, and we really haven't touched on this yet, is the street corner wheel concept. So this is really good whenever you run this with your bunch to the wide side of the field. And what we're going to do here is we're going to corner out our slot, or basically either of these guys, but we're going to corner out one of them, we're going to streak one of them, and then we're going to essentially run it like this. So what happens is this tight end wheel is going to pull that outside quarter super late into the route combo, and oftentimes you're going to be able to hit it against this now this also the same exact concept also works like in verticals for example so like if we go to verticals and we just corner out one of these guys you can flat one of them what will happen in, in cover four is because that seam wheel is going to get into a different position of the vertical it can still manipulate that quarter a little bit better than other things can now you can also run this to the short side but i do find it be to be pretty good against cover two specifically which we'll come back to cover two in a minute but if we were in streak, wheel, flat, you see here, it's wide open to the sideline. So it's a way that we can essentially use that tight end wheel as a pull route for everything else that we're wanting to accomplish. Another setup out of double post that I think is worth at least mentioning is a really good way. Is, I call it a scissor setup, but basically we're going to tight end apprentice corner our tight end. We're going to streak the slot receiver. What I like to do with this setup specifically, I really don't like to have this. This combo is going to take a little bit of time. So I like to drag that backside solo and block my running back. So with this tight end apprentice corner, what he's going to do a really good job of is this double post uh, post is going to pull that quarter vertically. And you see here how that deep outside quarter can't defend that tight end. So this is a way in which we're able to utilize double posts in kind of a unique way that is going to attack a lot of the main defenses that you're going to face, especially when you run your bunch to the wide side of the field. As you see, this is going to be open to the right side, and you're going to be able to possession catch it on the sideline. One of the more popular things that people are going to do is they're going to try to play cover four to one side and play cover two to the other side or cover three to one side and cover two to the other side. So the way that this would practically look would be something like what you see on your screen. So this is a legitimate coverage that a lot of people like to call against bunch because if you think about it, we've mabled on that left side. Uh, so we're going to be able to take away a lot of float concepts there. I'm able to kind of poach back here. We might even cross man the tight end. This is going to do a really good job of being able to manipulate that coverage. The reason why is because with the tight end corner, they're going to go use the post route. They're going to leave that tight end corner. And as you see here, it just gives us a nice high low to the right hand side. Another reason the setup is really good is because oftentimes what can occur is their user will actually run to that tight end because they'll think it's another combo. And then that is going to then give your post a chance to be able to get over the top. So those are some of the best setups in the game.
from the play Double Post. There's a lot of other ones that we could get into. One of my favorites is to use a running back wheel with a backside drag, a little switch combo here on the left with that streak. This really spaces the field out really well. And again, always understand that you can throw this post right in the middle if the user does not play it. The next play we're going to be going over is curl flat. And this is where we're going to be running our double corner combo. The best way to run double corner is to utilize a tight end apprentice corner, a streak from the outside player, and that deep corner to the slot. This is a great setup, and it's a setup that's going to cause the opponent a lot of issues because there is really no zone in the game that is going to be able to defend this. As you see, if it's cover three or cover four, you're going to throw that short corner. And then if it is cover two, which we, we've said before, a lot of people are potentially going to be in cover two against you because it does a decent job against double post. Well, now you'll see here with double corner that our one receiver is going to absolutely get wide open over the top for a big play. Now, one of the other things that is really popular this year is a lot of people like to run what's known as a double flat or double Mabel coverage. Now, a double Mabel coverage is a good coverage, but there are some weaknesses to it that we can exploit. A double corner gives us probably one of the best chances against it to be able to exploit it for a big play. So this 30-yard cloud on the outside, oftentimes it's at 25, it could be at 30. You can run this version of double corner. And essentially what's going to happen is that this R1 receiver a lot of times is going to get over the top of this 30 yard. Now he didn't there. And I will say in practice mode, I've noticed that the 30 yard cloud is a little bit deeper than it actually is in game. So in game, you're going to find a lot more success with this specific play. But in general, I mean, even if you ran like uh, curl flat, like so, you can throw the tight end corner underneath of the 30 yard cloud. Or if you wait on this, a lot of times this can get over the top. Now, again, here in practice, but it's just not going to happen for us. But just know that is one of the best ways to do it. Now, another, another principle that I wanted to give you is what a lot of people like to do is they play their double Mabel, right? And, and oftentimes it looks something like this. So, again, what's this coverage? Practically speaking, this is just a cover two, right? And how do we manipulate cover two? Well, the best way to manipulate it is with an outside apprentice post on this side. So what you can do with the play curl flat, for example, is you can actually post this outside guy, still run the double corner concept, maybe even put a tight end drag or running back Texas out there. And what a lot of times will happen is once he kind of crosses the face of that safety, although that guy played really good, actually, that guy played way too good. Um, by putting a running back wheel, that's going to solve that. Or I'll show you even another thing you can do. So again, this is this is to make sure that you're able to beat double flat. So another thing that you can do is you can run this setup right here with the tight end apprentice corner, and then you can utilize a wheel and a drag. This is a very simple setup, and it's not necessarily great if they're blitzing you, but if they're in a double flat Mabel coverage, it should almost every single time be a one play score because they're really not going to be expecting that outside apprentice post, and they're oftentimes going to be uh, not getting a lot of pressure because they're only sitting three people. One of the best short side setups of the entire game is what we're about to show you out of the play Z spot and go. What you're going to be able to do with this play is you're going to be able to run essentially a double corner combo. The way you're going to run this double corner is you're going to have a corner on both sides. So you're going to streak your outside bunch receiver. You're going to wheel your running back. That's pretty much it. And essentially what's going to happen here is we're going to have a high-low on both sidelines. It's a great two-minute two minute drill type of play. And you'll see here the C route and wheel combo is a little bit deeper. Uh, this, this one is a little bit deeper than the one that we showcased earlier out of double post. So by utilizing this C route, you'll see here this is the double post. You see it's about a 15-ish yard. If we go to Z spot and go, now that cut is about a 25 to 30-yard C route. So you see here, they're going to have to have 30s on both sides to really be able to defend this. Now that C route, I have found the most success not freeforming it, but simply just passing it down into the outside. And let's say the user goes to the right side to go defend that. Then you're able to throw this corner on the short side, and they can't really guard it in cover four, cover three. They're going to have to be double flatting both sides, which is obviously we're going to have really good plays 
if they were to do that, such as the motion out double post setup. This setup is another one that you could, if you want to run it like this, you certainly can. Uh, but what this is going to do a really good job of is just manipulating that cover two. So if, if they are running a lot of double flat cover two, this is a great way to get a big play against those adjustments. Now, that's just the bunch formation. Another one that's uh, of a really good short side setup is what I'm about to show you out of verticals. And this play is going to be really good for attacking, again, that double flat. Why is it good? Well, because the user is going to be putting a ton of conflict in the middle of the field. And essentially, all we're going to do is just streak our running back here. What you're going to be able to look for is this wheel route on the short side. As you can notice here, this wheel route is going to be super open on that sideline for a big hitter over the top. Another thing that you can do with this, and this is a very specific, like, I am 100% anticipating that they are in a double flat coverage, but it, maybe it's only to the bunch side. We're going to streak the slot receiver and then really any whatever else you want to do. So like if you want to put the tight end on, I mean, um, really anything, it doesn't matter. Whatever you want to put him on, you can. But what you're going to find here is that this deep half is going to really get held by that deep fade. And then you can throw this on the sideline for a pretty big play most of the time. So that's something to look for in the play verticals. And you'll see here again, oftentimes the tight end wheel can also be thrown up in the seam. But, but basically, if they're running a lot of cover two, this is one of my favorite ways to manipulate it is just go to verticals, streak the running back. And then oftentimes one of these wheels is going to be open and Harold Carmichael is playing out of his mind. But even if he goes to the outside wheel, you'll notice here that you can throw you can throw this in the seam. Harold, Harold Carmichael is kind of going nuts here. I'll show you a wide side variation. So if you do really want to use this idea or this method of being able to manipulate the double flat, which I don't think you have to, like, you know, the double flats really, they're so much open that you don't have to kill, you don't have to try to bomb it. But this is like, if you know they're doing it, motion sky up, it's got a streak and almost always this kind of variation should do a really good job. Now you see here, now you got a little bit more space on that sideline. And Harold Carmichael, low key, is playing this way better than I thought he would. So I'll show you another variation. So another thing that you can do, again, this is double flat specifically, uh, is you have this short side. So this fade on the short side is really good. Now there's a couple ways to use it. I think the easiest way is to motion your running back out, put him on a streak. And then you can really do whatever you want on the back end. You could literally just run it just like this. What will happen a lot of times is that running back will hold that deep half for just a second, and you can throw this over the top. Of course, I'm not going to be able to do it. But if they press you in cover two, which is way more common and what you'll see a lot, if they press you in cover two, you don't even have to motion the running back out. He'll just basically clear that cloud. You're going to freeform this to the left. And you see, finally, we're able to complete a pass against uh against that but in general verts is just a really good play and there's so many ways to run it uh one of my favorites is just out route the running back and the reason i like this setup is because a lot of people that run bunch don't really attack the solo side flat this gives you a really nice high low over there to that left side uh you got the crosser the cool part about the crosser is it's going to get they're going to have to have a 30. So if they don't have a 30 over there, this is a this is a dot every single time. You can just throw that on the sideline, and they have to have a 30-yard cloud. So now, let's say, you know, okay, they back this guy up. That's your cue. Okay, they have a 30-yard cloud over there. A lot of times, they may even just uh, zone this guy in a yellow. This is why I like to put the running back on a table route or a flat or an out because a lot of times they let you throw this, and then – now you're going to wear that out. So then what are they going to do? Then they're going to do what we talked about with the traditional 30 and 5. So a traditional 30 and 5. And that leaves this defender and this defender. Okay? So the reason verticals is so good is because let's go back to that other setup we talked about where we're just going to streak the running back. What happened is the user is going to be put into conflict. And the user is going to have to choose. Am I going to guard the tight end? 
or am I going to guard the crossing route? So in this case, he chooses to guard the crosser, and we can throw the tight end route consistently. So let's say now you're watching uh, or you're, you're running this play, and they're running that 30 and 5 type stuff. Now they take the tight end, which is fine because we have the crosser. So this hook curl to left is going to get taken by the running back, and then you can throw this right in to split it, and this is one of the most high-level reads you can make as a bunch player. So now you have the crosser over the middle against that double flat, and let's say you're playing someone that's really making adjusties, and they may do something like this right here with this guy that's going to take the crosser. All of this is going to ultimately leave the running back wide open right here, and so you see how this just breaks down zone coverage really well. And it's really, really hard to beat. Okay. So that is verticals halfback under. There's a lot of variations of this. Now I want to get into smash return. We already talked about the skinny post setup here. I would say, like, don't sleep on this setup. This setup is really effective. And a lot of times I have found that this setup right here is really good for the double flat. Uh, if they're deep halfing on that right side, a lot of times you will be able to throw this. You'll see here if you've got to be a little bit more patient. And that deep half is playing out of his mind. But oftentimes that deep half will suck down and you'll be able to throw that over the middle. But even if you're not and they are running a double flat coverage on you, this is a really good play. Because, again, the user is in conflict. Oftentimes he's going to go guard the post over the middle as I audible to trips. So let me go back to smash return. So what you'll see here is the user will climb to the post and it's going to leave this open right here, a little juke inside and you got about 15, 20 yards potentially if you break a tackle. So that's smash return um, and, and how I like to utilize it. Another setup that is really good for either Z spot and go or double post. I think it's probably better for Z spot and go just because you have a deeper uh, C route. It's just motioning the running back out on a streak. And then really everything else is up to you. So if you want to run a double corner to the right, you can run a double corner to the right. If you want to run a drag and a, a curl flat combo, you can run that as well. But basically we're just getting a high low read here to the left sideline and taking advantage of the fact that most people are going to be leaving that guy in a third, which is why another one of my favorite setups out of double post and a really, really underrated setup is we're going to bluff that. So we're going to motion the running back out. So they might think, oh, it's, it's, streak, it's a streak and a C route, right? Well, now what we're going to run is a, uh, a flat and a drag. And the reason I like this is because you still can get that cover three manipulation. So if they are in a cover three coverage, you see right here or cover four, that post route is going to get open for a big play against the coverage. So you can you can kind of play some games over here uh, with this two man game. And then ultimately you can, if you want to run double posts like this as well. Um, this is an underrated variation of double posts. And while there are a lot of resources that are going on seam streaks, it can still be one of the better variations of it. And the reason why is because, again, we're getting – so, like, let's say let's say you're getting – it's a really good example, but let's say you're getting 30s and 5s, right? So you're getting this. Okay, so the short side C route is going to get underneath of a 30-yard cloud. So if they're running a lot of that, you just go to this, and you can throw this before he gets to the 30-yard cloud flat. Another really underrated way, to very simple way – to be able to manipulate any kind of double flat or double Mabel is going to be essentially just a basic curl flat combo. And the reason this is so good is because they can't have those 30. They, it has to be a five yard purple. You cannot be a 10 yard. So because of that, what you're going to see is this five yard purple is going to get manipulated by a simple curl flat concept. So very, very basic way to be able to manipulate that defense. Now, the rest of the formation, you can go to Bunch Strong Nasty. We have other uh, schemes on this. We have trips tied in, uh, trips tied in offset. There's a lot of really, really good plays. For example, you can come out in a short side bunch and you have your threat of double post. 
but we know that a lot of people like to go to um, some type of Mabel concept. So now we're going to go to this, and now they're going to give up a touchdown if they're in any kind of double flat. So you see here, this is one of the best ways to manipulate the double Mabel is to use that post. You see how wide open this is. So if you want to get the rest of my Colts Offensive ebook, it's available by being a school.com member. The link to sign up for that is in the description down below. Ten bucks will get you access to all of the ebooks, all the updates over there, both for Madden and for NCAA College Football 25. You can sign up by clicking the link down in the description below.